You know, it's kind of funny. I was thinking about what content to include in today's video. And excuse my voice, I've been suffering with COVID for over a week now. I came up with nothing but blanks when trying to think about what video to make today. After, after all, every day over the past uh, few days has been a slow news day. Then suddenly it occurred to me, I've got this prediction that the end is nigh for Sony first party exclusives, much in the way Xbox games are readily available on PC platforms and really have been for many years now. Now, this is not me advocating for exclusives, the end of exclusives rather. This is, you know, I'll tell you how I felt about it shortly, but uh, Sony has picked up a few port studios specifically for PC game development. And I've been reliably informed the company is not stopping just at its recent purchase of that studio, Nix's. But then a really bizarre thing happened. I was casually sifting through the internet, as you do, and the following jewelshockers.com article came up, but they went with a slightly different take. Now, I think I was meant to find this article, and I'm not a big believer in coincidence. Everything happens for a reason, so I decided to follow my instincts and just go with it. Makes sense, right? So before I begin this opinion slash prediction story, I should let it known that as a seasoned gamer, I am all for exclusivity and I'm all for focusing only on the latest generation of consoles as soon as humanly and economically possible so that we can see what the system is truly capable of without those barriers, without having the basic core design have to fit really into older platforms. It's what I am used to and I find it more exciting than multi-platform cross-generational releases because any game specifically targeting a platform is going to yield far better on-screen results and the experience and take full advantage of the host hardware in ways that merely picking a lead platform then porting it across and then sometimes the outcome is a lesser version of that game. So exclusives are all about pushing creativity and keeps platform holders first party studios constantly looking over their shoulder it inspires competition and shifts boxes with that you now know where i stand on the issue i'm all for exclusivity however regardless of how you or i feel about exclusives i believe hence my prediction which is by the tail end of the year 2024 nintendo will be the only console manufacturer left standing that can truly claim the word exclusive. Sony, I predict, will end PS4 game development by the end of 2023, then eventually release PlayStation games on PC day and date with console by 2024. And Microsoft, I predict, will fully adopt the term only on Game Pass, as opposed to only on Xbox or Xbox exclusive or Series X or whatever. So that's my prediction, simple and to the point. Though with that being said, what exactly is JewelShockers.com's take on this? And I am literally reading this article for the first time with you. Link in the description. So the article in question has a headline that reads, God of War Ragnarok could be the last PlayStation exclusive, more specifically the last exclusive to appear on a PlayStation 4 system. Now, while fans are eagerly awaiting for the arrival of, of the game, Sony is yet to announce a release date of the same. Amidst that, it seems quite likely that it will be the last PlayStation exclusive we will see on the PlayStation 4. The fact that both Horizon, Forbidden West and God of War Ragnarok have PS4 ports, one would believe that the trend would continue for a while. However, that seems to be far from the uh, case. If we look at Sony's plans beyond God of War Ragnarok, I mean after God of War Ragnarok, none of the games that Sony has announced so far has been confirmed to have a PS4 port or version. The likes of Marvel's Wolverine, the highly anticipated sequel to Marvel's Spider-Man, and even Final Fantasy 16 will not be released on PlayStation 4. This strongly suggests that God of War Ragnarok could be the last game we will see on PlayStation 4. I mean, is Forspoken on PS4 or is that just PS5 and PC? Sound off in the comments if you know the answer to that one. Now, while this might disappoint a lot of fans out there, it's not something that's really that disappointing. I mean, if you look at the larger picture, you will realize that by the time God of War Ragnarok releases, the PS5 will have completed two years 
Since it initially launched, one might wonder that this could be a way to just boost the sales of the PS5, but the, the reality is much more than that. I mean, if you look at it, games being developed specifically for PS5 could benefit a lot. The game engines for these games were optimized for cross-gen, but with the PS4 really out of the equation, it means that developers will be solely able to focus on the PS5, which is my sentiment exactly. And this would likely mean that we will be seeing even better visuals on more polished native PS5 games or PS5 client, as a Digital Foundry likes to say. Now, while Sony is yet to make an announcement regarding any of this, so it's all speculation at this point and opinion, this seems the likely fate of PS4. And I'll be honest, I'm not sad to see it go. It's been a wonderful system, but it's had its time. I mean, how long can it possibly go on for? How long can it hold back progress? And I understand it's very difficult to get a PS5, but I'm sorry if we, you know, this could carry on for the next year or two. There's got to be a point where we just say, you know what, let's go all in on PS5. I mean, why should the people who own the console suffer for the people who don't own? And it's not selfish, it's called progress. So DualShock has seen the change starting with PS4, which is inevitable, making the reality quite predictable. Less obvious though, less predictable, and dare I say it, more obtuse, is not if, but when Sony bites the bullet and releases its games day and date on both PS5 and PC platforms. Because if they get rid of the PS4, and there are still limited PS5s out there, then they will need the PC to pick up the slack that the PS4 will leave behind. There's just too much money on the table for Sony to ignore. And I don't think Sony and Nintendo are even remotely as close to being competitors as, say, Sony and Microsoft are. Now, Nintendo usually picks and stays in its own lane, rarely focusing on power and more on polished quality game releases. And rarely, if ever, do you hear it talk about any rumor. There's no talk or rumor of any Nintendo developed game heading to PC or other platforms. So yes, Nintendo will likely be the last one standing for true exclusives. But hey, that's not going to stop anyone from playing those games or purchasing console hardware, multiple console hardware. It's easy, extremely easy. And I've heard it millions of times. It's easy for anyone to say, I'll go build or buy a powerful PC and play all the PlayStation and Xbox games there and use emulators to play Switch. And sure, I'll believe that that is entirely feasible, but for a minority, not the majority. Potent PC gaming hardware is still three to five times more expensive than just simply buying a plug and play console like PS5 or Xbox Series X for around 500 UK pounds or 500 US dollars. So exclusivity or not exclusivity doesn't really matter anymore. We're still going to buy games and affordable systems to play them on. But hey, that's just my opinion. What say you? So let's continue the discussion cordially in the comments. None of this fanboy bickering. Go ahead, sound off, share your thoughts and opinions on today's news as that brings us to the end of the video. But subscribe for more gaming news, rumor and speculation. And of course, hit the like button and yes, that notification bell so we don't miss each other. And you can also help Foxy Games UK reach more gamers. So feel free to share the video. And you may also want to consider supporting Foxy Games UK via Patreon because we're like family now. So thank you, and you can find a link in the video description. But uh, that concludes our time together on this Monday. It is food for thought. And thanks for hanging out with me. Until next time, play games, not corporations.